now i would introduce uh, dr uh, sardindu bukherji uh, who exclusively and in, in, in very various capacities writes on peasant movements freedom struggle forced migration foreign relations culture of nationalism and various uh, very uh, important and crucial issues uh, currently he is a member of indian council of historical research he has taught in uh, at hansraj college and du uh, in subjects of modern history uh, currently at delhi uh, and north and south campus he is also in a teaching capacity a post doctoral research scholar at department of history uh, burbeck college university of london a charles wallis visiting fellow at center of indian studies in the department of politics at university of hull he has been a member of indian council of social science research and various academic bodies uh, all across india that is allahabad hyderabad and uh, kolkata uh, the topic which uh, dr mukherjee is go going to talk on is uh, shri s r goel and the bengali writers rabindranath tagore and s c chatterjee uh so i request uh, saradindu ji to please uh, enlighten us with his thoughts namaskar um thank you shushank ji i'm uh, grateful to all the organizers um conrad harish ji adit and all participants for making this mega event possible sitram ji deserved much more from this society and basically our society remains extremely ungrateful we forget to remember people who really have done so much for the society so when we talk of sitaram ji uh, or ram swarup ji or even conrad for that matter we feel what great injustice has been done by the indian society the hindu society to be precise we don't value our talent we don't recognize the merit the services people render to the society now actually uh, my talk is not on the literary aspects though because i was thinking it too minds what to do because uh, uh, we have been writing on uh, things uh, which are very close to sitaram ji's minds even before sitaram ji i got to know him in 1990 1991 and then when i met sitaram ji uh, in the height of the ajodha movement my convictions uh, were further strengthened and then we learned a lot he gave a new dimension to our understanding of our history he uh, familiarized us with the islamic theological sanction that explained the muslim political behavior so sitaram ji uh, few things i have mentioned about uh, some of his uh, qualities of his uh, heart mind when conrad edited uh, the felicitation volume after sitaram ji passed away I again mention uh, because some of the people probably very young like Shushan ji probably are not familiar with that. Now Sitaram ji uh, had a very high academic standard, very high academic standard, and uh, I have been associated with some high academic bodies, quote unquote, in India for several years now. both with the indian council of social science research now with the indian council of historical research these are apex body funding bodies and have come across people holding very high positions but no record of publication so <laughs> if people outside the circle they hear me they will be scandalized but sitaram ji was far far above that so that is one very important thing for a scholar for a scholar extraordinary and who is a mentor to so many upcoming scholars next uh, sitaram ji knew very good hindi as our distinguished friend professor dilip has just talked about that even he gave me a copy of that book i have read that in bits and parts uh, but sitaram ji didn't encourage people writing in hindi he said one must write in english and our target audience should be the intelligentsia and this is one point of similarity one important point of similarity that we find in sitaram ji a line of thinking which was also espoused given by tagore and sarochandra chatterjee decades back 100 years back 
and uh, they're all great minds, but this is very important. And I don't mean any disrespect to Hindi or any Indian language for the matter. Sitaramji knew Bengali very well. In fact, sometimes uh, he surprised me by naming scholars, naming characters, even which I had not read. And I also read, keep reading Bengali literature. Even now, the quality has come down. Uh, and Sitaramji, I got the feeling that he has read much more than a average Bengali Bhadralok has read. One of, the few th one of the first things he told me when I met him first was that he was explaining why the revolutionary movement was successful in Bengal. As you know that Maharashtra, Bengal, and then Punjab, the three epicenters of revolution movement, and Bengal, of course, was far ahead. He said, if you're looking for one ideological strand, it was Swami Vivekananda who'd move from village to village in Bengal until people read Bunkim, Bunkim Popolo. And this very few scholars actually know this. And actually, Swamiji did that. But yet, uh, uh, Sitaramji wanted people to write in English language. He said, look, we write for the educated elite and academia. And from this, these ideas are taken below by the media and then the common people. It's unfortunate. In a matter of regret, if a matter of shame, that the ideas with which Tagore became famous, Sharadana Chatterjee became famous, or Sitaramji much later on, these ideas find no mention in our academic curriculum. I'm not going into the uh, history of that, what happened in the last seven, eight years, that's for a different occasion altogether. People, those who claim to be very fond of Tagore. They concentrate on Tagore's music, Rabindra Sangeet. I'm a very fan of it. His poems, even his novels and short stories, which are fabulous, but not much on his essays. And to understand Tagore, is it all right? Some screen has, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah. And uh, so people ignore the essays in Bengali written by Tagore. Now I'll come back, get back to Tagore and Sharachandra Chatterjee later in my talk. So coming back to the point that the ideas uh, floated by these two titans and then Sitaramji in our own lifetime, I find they don't find any mention any reference in the textbooks or in the public discourse. So was Sitaramji's works all gone in vain? No, not at all. Thanks to the social media, uh, Sitaramji has a big following, much more than what I had seen when I first met him. I read Sitaramji in organizer articles, but frankly speaking, I told him that I read your articles and some of the files are also kept at my home in my library files. But it probably didn't have that impact because this is all wrong training that he didn't have a doctor or professor before his name. I told Sitran, Look, I found your articles interesting. I have kept it along with the archival files, but I didn't remember your name. But I found it very interesting. Only when my uncle Avash Kumar Chatterjee, who was a serving IS officer in Bihar and was in Oxford at that time, he wrote to me that if you really get into the movement, you should get in touch with Sidharamji. And that is when Sidharamji first came to my home, carrying all the books. And the first meeting, he said, I don't need uh, book purchases. I need readers. I need writers. And we had a long meeting for two hours, this first meeting, but fine. And very soon I read the first book, uh, one of the books that he gave me, Why I Become Hindu. I read it nonstop. It took me four or five hours. By the time I finished reading this book, I had tears in my eyes, you know. Next day I called up Sitaramji, I have read this book, I have to see you. And that is the beginning of this interaction with Sitaramji. 
I uh, rarely visited his Deriya Ganj office. I always met him at his model town library and office, which was about 10 minutes walking distance from my house in Delhi. So there I meet him without calling him up. I'll go and he is always time for me. Deriya Ganj, I visited very rarely, only when some outstation scholars will come. They have come for a daily for a short notice. They are going to catch the flights. They said, can you take us to Sitaramji? So that, that is how, that is when I met Harish Chandraji also. So this is it. Now, once I'll come back to the, the, the substance of the story, but this is also very important. This was uh, the day before Saraswati Puja. It would be 95, 96. It was raining very heavily. So normally I used to walk down to his office. I took my car because I had to buy the puja stuff, flowers and all kinds of things for the puja next day. I said, chalo, ek bar, might as well meet Sitaramji. No one is office except the boy used to work, offer tea and all. His son uh, was a good friend of us. Um, Pradeepji had still not come. He was working all around. It's getting dark, 7.38 or so, raining very heavily. Uh, so he was uh, looking at some manuscript of some very important people who has been already been named uh, by some previous scholars, but who is not anymore probably with us these days in the team that we have. I asked him, Sitaramji, Sitaramji, aapka to itna umur ho gaya, main aapka to bhoot chota har cheez se. Main samastha ho, thik hai. Maybe I have some motive if I write kind of these things, which I don't have, but it's take. But why do you work so hard at this age? You know, Shardendu, you know, our Shastra has a concept of Rishirin that Harishji had referred to. Pitririn, Rishirin. So we must pay back to our ancestors the legacy they have left for us. the things they have told us. So that was Sitaramji. He, he would be very angry with people who didn't write properly. His standards were very high, very impeccable. And when I look at some of the publications, even by the so-called big publishing house, I find occasional mistakes which Sitaramji would not normally allow. One reason, of course, was that he had an extremely competent help in the person of Harish Chandraji. I know how meticulous he is. Now, uh, Sitaramji brought us in touch, kept us, this generation, in touch with the ideas that the previous generation had given us. You see, when you, we grew up, 60s, school, huh? school, high school, college, first days, MA, 71, 72, just started teaching, just doing research. This 10, 15 years time, we had a fairly reasonable standard of history books. The Marxist books, the Zomila Thapas kind of things were there, but we always thought, okay, this is a political line. We did not take that seriously, but we were happy with the other textbooks, Sarjadunar, Ramesh Chandra Majumdar, Bandarkars, Jaiswals, Altekar, Shama Shastri, Neel Kanda Shastri, Mukherjee's, all kinds of people. We read those books. And we always knew that even if we don't follow the official line, the examiners would not be harsh. But only when we started uh, teaching and research, got registered for PhD in daily mid 70s, days of emergency, we realized, my God, no, this is the official line. Every meeting, every seminar, PhD seminar, uh, will be reminded that. This is the official line. No deviation is allowed. 
division means penal action. For my PhD, I was registered with a well-known Marxist scholar. I would name him. It's a different thing that I started hating him, but at least a well-read person, typical Marxist tradition. Some of them are well-read. At least they knew, they have read some of the books, if not all the books. But every time I said, I wrote this, he said, why have you written this? But of course he said, okay, you are right to disagree. He haunted me profusely. In a sense, he lifted materials for my research. And subsequently, when he could do me something, do, do me help, he didn't do that. But I kept writing. So this was one standard. Things were not very serious. When I first wrote my History Congress paper, 1976, emergency, the big Bosnia department, again, I'm naming you, who just taught me, and he was a very powerful man in the political setup. He was also the first chairman of the ICHR. He called me. He said, no, you are a, he said, you're a bright person, but why do you take this line? <laughs> you have a whole career before you think of it. He gave me a subtle warning. I refused to heed that warning. No wonder I have turned out to be a failure in my life, but it didn't matter. So, no, so in our days, 60s, 70s, uh, things were really not very, very bad. So much so that after my PhD in modern Indian history, I worked on Bihar peasants, 1930s. I had gone to England for a scholarship to do work on British history. I said, my was a shift from Indian history to British history. Absolutely safe. And some of the British Marxist historians whom I knew, Eric Hobsbawm, the top man, he was my neighbor in Babbitt College. He has a room next to my college, my room. I'd meet him every second in the senior common room. I never found him very atrocious, bad even. We read the entire gamut of literature by Christopher Hill, Thompson. I never found them offensive. But India, the entire lot, name them, they're horrible. The propagandist, the shallow and the liars. But then ultimately I had to come back. I could have stayed back in England. It is, I'd not yet participated in, in the Ayodhya movement. I'd still not write, cited writing the newspapers. So I was still, except few people knew that he's not our man. Okay. But in our generation, what happens, uh, what kept us alive, intellectually alive, were the literary writings of Tagore, Arsidat, Arsidat, very famous economic history of India, the second batch of Indians to get into the ICS, Congress president twice, great mind. He also wrote in Bengali, historical novels and very solid ones. We don't read them. And of course, Sharachande Chatterjee. And whatever Sitaram you write on real meaning of history, study of history, use of history, politics, Hindu-Muslim relations, communalism, everything we had learned from Tagore, Arsidat, and Sharatande Chatterjee, and few more. We didn't read much of Hindi, uh, except one paper that we did in school and college. We read Premchand, we read Jihad, but still Jihad also at one level Premchand is compromising, little getting soft. But Tagore and Sarathana Chatterjee, they never compromised. Basics, fundamentals were very clear. So when I started reading Sitaramji, 91, 92 onwards, I realized, my God, fine. <laughs> this is exactly what you are taught 
that is what we read even though the, their ideas don't form part of the syllabus academic syllabus was horrible and i would tell my students year after year more than 40 years 42 43 years that i'm sorry first class i will tell them i don't agree with most of the textbooks which are offered to you but if i tell you my views or if i try to tell you authentic history then you will be badly marked and this is going to be very very dangerous for you yet i would be telling them about sitaram ji and various other things saying this is also school of thought but when i taught european history and british history in north campus south campus for many many years i didn't have problem england has also produced lot of marxist scholars but somehow i have respect for all of them the really educated people really scholars our marxists are propagandists basically propagandists low level careerists and liars and everyone who i tell them look i am a marxist and they delhi in campus bangali nikarwala they will say me fine i didn't mind that but i said look i have no problem using christopher hill or eric hobbum but a problem using this set of people from calcutta jadavpur aligarh and patna they are basically they liars they mislead so this is how uh, the <laughs> problems begin in the study of indian history so what sitaram ji uh, ram swarup ji when i talk of it and to which conrad hills joined arun shori wrote so profusely on all of your friends talagere ji you dr karant so many of you you added to that hidden knowledge hidden source of inspiration information which had been deliberately shut to this generation of generations of indians even after 8 years change of government is no change in that now when i was uh, trying to think what to do for this seminar what should i speak i thought i would not speak on the usual things i write i've just done a book on Constitu the citizenship amendment act so i was busy in that again partition hindu muslim relations for one year i worked hard on that so i would wanted a little relief from that i said what to do i said why not to do this yet i was very skeptical whether uh this will be good enough for a very serious academic discussion so i sent my abstract to both conrad and harish ji two days back and they said fine okay yet i was not very satisfied how to link it up last night late in the night i was just finalizing the talk i suddenly came across a piece written by us based indian historian narasingh p ram shil is a bengali title shil ram narasingh p he wrote a piece in 2014 published by sage where he had made a comparison between sharachandra chatterji and russo actually poles apart sharachandra chatterji very much indian mid 19th century and russo one of the inspiration for french revolution is among the philosophers french revolution chatterjee lived in bihar bhagalpur dehri and son calcutta burma similarly montesquieu also born in geneva but he also worked in france and how narasingh sil professor sil justifies that 
when comparing Sarchand Chatterjee with Rousseau, he said, I know they stand pole apart from each other, temporarily, territorially, and culturally. But yet he found the similarity of approach on human sensibility and sentiment. So that is the last point I checked last night. So that gave me the confidence, okay, this may not turn out to be that bad a story. Okay. First, I will uh, talk about Sharachandra Chatterjee. Maybe he's uh, less known than Tagore. But when I went to study history at Patna College many years back, mid 60s, I found some of the brightest students in my class, Bihari boys, you know, they had read most of Sarachandra Chatterjee in Hindi translation. Probably Sarachandra Chatterjee is the most translated author of all Indian authors I've been told. I don't know, I've been told very well translated. Now, briefly, Sharatan Chatterjee, he didn't get a Nobel like Tagore got. But he wrote profusely. Tagore came from a very affluent family, very rich family. Chatterjee came from a very, very ordinary family. His parents couldn't afford him a school education because they didn't have enough money to pay for the school fees those days, more than 100 years back. But once he was established as a writer, he also became associated with the Indian National Congress, very active. And he had been president of the District Congress Committee in Bengal several times. And, and Chatterjee wrote very clearly on Hindu-Muslim relations. Okay, now one point of similarity between Tagore, Chatterjee and Sitaramji. And all of them remind us that no society can cut themselves from the roots which comes out slow, so clearly in Sitanji's writings, his writings on Nehru, why he became a Hindu, and all the scholars he had mentored, promoted over the years. And this was very, very crucial in the writings of Tagore, Sharachandra Chatterjee also, or Arsidat for that matter. I'm not talking of Bankim now. Bankim was original spirit probably, because that was a very, very big story. And I'll just touch briefly some of the points of the raised by these scholars. So, Sharadatha Chatterjee and Tagore, they are committed to the values of the Bharatiya, the Indian culture, the Sanatan Dharma, and no compromise on that. that Tagore was technically a Brahmin, a Brahmo, isn't it, Brahmo? They came from a, of course, Tagore sub, Shandila Gotra, Banerjee's, like Mamata Banerjee, same surname, but fine. Uh, but they are Brahmos. Yet they had sacred ceremonies, Jana Hota Tha, sacred ceremony. And he was so well versed in Veda and Upanishad. A 10 year old boy, his father had taken him to Dalhousie those days. Before that, trains had, railways had started. And Tagore said, every day my father will wake me up at, you know, at 5.30 in the morning, make me take bath in the cold water and chant Vedic mantras. So that was that kind of Brahmo he was, you know, very much rooted in his Hindu traditions. So this is one very important point. Second point, I am being very blunt on this. This may reflect on some of the ideologues and politicians of contemporary India. But this is a stark reality. 
the what tagore swarthan chatterjee and sitaram ji they wanted all india team all india team to work for the national cause which unfortunately cannot be said about all our leaders for whom caste loyalty the language they speak at home still remain very very important i can't be more explicit at this stage you know, tagore had written so much i will come back to tagore later on tagore had so much of concern for the moplas the mopla victims of moplas khilafat movement long corresponds with dr munje he had gandhi was almost justifying that okay this is not the time for that next if i time i will talk on that he is so respectful to tilak once tilak had raised some money for tagore that he should go to europe england and propagate the values of indian civilization when tagore when tilak raised the money wanted to give it to tagore tagore said he was doing more important work equally important work so keep the money for your work it's a tremendous tremendous respect one of the iconic uh, novels that uh, chatterjee wrote was called pather dabi the the right of the way call it is about a revolutionaries is about a bengali revolutionary based in barma sabasachi this is 1920s and this is when exactly subhash chandra bose was in mandalay and in sin jail just before a little digression who are the people who were kept in barma the most inhospitable toughest of conditions lokman tilak ajit singh uncle of bhagat singh subhash chandra bose trilokana chakravarti like that other big leaders were kept in nice palace like jails you know elabad aga khan palace very important point. i wish one day some research is done on this which leaders went to which jail and how they were treated so this is 20s immediately the book was banned 27 the book was banned and here the characters who are helping sabasachi that bengali revolutionary was a sikh was a south indian marathi hero again marathi is a hero most important trusted man so you see this is all india team and this is what exactly rajbihari bose did or subhas chandra bose did later on and sitranji steam was also like that international conrad india all provinces you see just look at the names no discrimination no favoritism based on the language you speak the caste you belong to never never he would not talk about these things but he always insists he told me sir i always try to find out the background of a person is very important as a huh. to try to know what his caste the language he speaks but that's all because he said that explains lot of things but his selection of writers he will have mentored he was as open as any of the great men of our country unfortunately this can't be said about all our leaders all our movements but fine now to cut a big uh, story short one cr das chitranjan das one of the iconic leader of motilal nehru pre gandhian phase the traveling in east bengal <coughs> sarachand chatterjee and cr das they are discussing about the demographic problem never never gandhi never discussed the problem the religious demography
Chitrendra Das told Sarak Chandra Chatterjee, what do you think of demographic, changing demographic scenario? Look, the recent growth, 50 lakh population, they have added 50 lakhs in few years. Sarak Chandra Chatterjee said, yes, very serious problem. And exactly similar sentiment was expressed by Bunkin Chandra Chatterjee in the first census report had come out, 1881. He says, the most important thing is this, the Muslims in Bengal are almost coming close to the Hindu population. It's a very, very dangerous signal. Yet we don't realize the importance of this. So few days back, Hindus, Sikhs in, in Kashmir were killed and the ongoing genocide going on in Bangladesh. We are keeping quiet. Also, just because I did a book on Chittagong Hill Tracks. Uh, I also wrote on Bangladesh Hindus. But writing them, Sipranji said, uh, fine. But he said, as long as Delhi, people in Delhi are not aware of this, ground situation would not change. He said, Delhi mein nahi ko kuch nahi farak padta hai. Bengali marta hai, Bangladesh mein kuch nahi farak padta hai. He said very clearly. So this is the insensitive nature of the Hindu society, the leaders that we have. Next, uh, Sitaramji, uh, sorry, uh, Shatran Chatterjee was writing on the, huh, the next question, uh, Chitranya Das asked him, what do you think of Hindu Muslim unity? He said absurd. Clearly he said absurd. You see, even if we just keep publishing or give chapters from these books in our history, literature, we can silence our critics. You don't have to cite Conrad Elst or Sitaram Goel. Just print Tagore and Chatterjee. No one will open their mouth. Amartya Sen would not say what then, if you cite Tagore, which I do now. I quote Tagore in original Bengali. They would not dare criticize because they know they are nothing before Tagore. So the material is there. Enough information is there. We are reluctant to use that. Either because our education, those who make our policy, they don't know. Or people who implement them, they are unaware of these things. But who will do this? Next, uh, Khilafat. Khilafat Mopla Sitaramji wrote profusely. I also did a forward to <laughs> book last year on Moplas <coughs> mentioned that Tagore had a long correspondence with Munje, Dr. Munje from Maharashtra on this. The atrocities heaped on the Hindus of Kerala. Very unsparing. And Shartan Chatterjee is, you know, he is, he is furious. Long essay on that. He says, what is this? He says, Hindu-Muslim unity, very respectful to Mahatma Ji. He says, Mahatma Ji, Dharma Pran, Saral. He said, fine. Mahatma Ji always calls Mahatma Ji Saral Admi, Sadhu. But he says, he is being trapped. He says, Khilafat, what does Khilafat mean to India's Muslims? They have not, they don't know what they eat, how they dress. Why? India's national movement should be clapped with that. This is absurd. It is very, very critical. Very critical. He said, by resorting to such policies, you just can't bring about Hindu Muslim unity. It's absurd. Next. He gave one example. 
that is i knew a brahmin cook who had married a muslim lady and he converted to islam and see within a years time i found so many changes the the way he spoke the way he dressed and the way he behaved so much of change and he said this is happening every day now it is a fashion that we talk of the common dna now the high and the mighty say we are all common so after all same dna so no problem you know how absurd <laughs> is this line of argument and this may be the official policy also as against this you know very interesting you may not agree with that and this is one point of uh, difference which i do see taram ji sitaram ji say would say uh, conversion to christianity uh, was as bad as conversion to islam i would say still conversion to christianity was really not that damaging one point will differ and all tell him that i won't mind living in an area surrounded by christian families but i'll be scared if there are 10 muslim families in my area i'll be scared you would not <laughs> say anything uh he said i he said i know uh, several christian friends who are hindus maybe they converted seven generations back but i can't make out that they are christians i just one to harendra mukherjee was a vice president of the constituent assembly uh then governor bengal for some time he was a christian but he would always tell his friend look are i am a radi brahman i am a bhardwa jyoti brahman after all why do you expect to be like english englishman so that is also there maybe some christians behave like that but he says fundamental difference between conversion to christianity and islam so like this uh, and all kinds of stories many many essays just because there's not much of time and when i get a chance to write this in an essay form i will expand these points language he said he criticized the muslimic policy in bengal 1930s 20s he said they want that bengali language should also incorporate since muslims are 54% population 54% of persian and arabic words urdu words they should not be using sanskrit words in bengali i said what is this so he will take up every issue actual real issues ground reality and explain it we speak on it write on it can you do it now that's the question now i could give more and more examples of uh, this uh, but i will just uh, keep 5 uh, minutes on tagore before i wrap it up <clears throat> this is a basic problem in our thinking is what you are afraid because of mainly career sometimes physical violence which is very common in west bengal now or certain parts of india also physical violence career they shouldn't be saying these things okay ye chalta hai but theek hai forget almost 100 years back sri aurobindo <laughs> said i'll read it out just three four lines i believe that the main cause of india's weakness is not subjection nor poverty but a diminution of thought power the spread of ignorance in the motherland of knowledge everywhere i see an inability or unwillingness to think an incapacity of thought or thought phobia actually this is a problem no sitaram ji did hesitate to 
tell that truth. He had press problems. He never got state funding. He never got the Saith Academy Award or even a Padma Sri. But he kept on writing, inspiring a generation of scholars, very good scholars. Tagore, uh, for Tagore, I uh, did a long essay in dialogue in 2017. So I'll uh, read out a few things for that. Because if I uh, try to find out, uh, trying to tell you uh, Tagore's contribution in the sphere of the specific uh, knowledge, information that you're talking of, that will take days. One, uh, one reference which uh, comes up time and again in uh, Tagore is a reference to the destruction of Hindu temples. Number of times, number of times. So this is one specific point of similarity between Siddharamji and Tagore. You see, we have also grown up amidst ruined, desecrated Hindu temples in my hometown, Bhagalpur, Bihar. On one side is Gaivinath, the massive Shiva temple destroyed by Aurangzeb or Kalapar, some people said. On another side, 10 kilometers away was Vikramshila. So we grew up in that. Then first important major visit was Var Varanasi. Uh, so I said, my God, so why the policemen are standing PAC? I asked my father, seven year old boy, he said, this is the history. So that's my first exposure to real history. So destruction of Hindu temples uh, is, is a, a very important uh, experience that we have all gone through. Even visiting Japan, standing before a Shinto shrine, and I remember this when I visited Japan, I was standing before a Shinto shrine. Actually, it happened to me also. Tagore, he said, I'm perplexed. Why we can't see such ancient temples in our land? He cites Delhi's case. Obviously, this is Kutub Minar complex. He said, everywhere our temples have been destroyed by the Muslims. Look how Japan has escaped this. And this comes number of times, number of times in the various essays that he wrote. Now, coming back to the sense of uh, history that Tagore had, in the various essays on that, again, he refers to always slavery of thousands of years. Always. Now, if I talk about this even now in IIC, Delhi, or in Calcutta, Calcutta probably killed if I say this. IIC, may, maybe I'll be spared, but they, they will say, this is a dangerous man. Slavery of thousands of years, he said, talks about that. He said, is our history a history of only conquest and defeat? Why are you only taught about that? Defeat, submission, humiliation. He said, no, no, there's a history beyond that. And we can't smother our real sense of history by repeated talking of defeats, defeats and conquests and subjugation, humiliation. He said, then how does one explain the emergence of Nanak, Chaitanya, Tukaram, and other saints? He says, this is real India. Why only talk about Delhi and Agra? Why not Kashi, Varanasi, or Navadip? So he goes back time and again to the Hindu past. And he said, Always, beyond the conquest, beyond the dynasties ruling in Delhi, Agra, Lahore, 
the flow of life was going on. Our culture had flourished despite many shocks. And we have kept alive the fundamentals of our belief and culture. He said, why we forget the bravery of Rajput and Maharashtrians? And he always refused to accept the official official version of the government of the day. So he said, as I feel or you feel, that we needed new textbooks. <laughs> I still look for the day when we get the announcement from NCRT, Ministry of Education, that, okay, here are the new sets of books you should appreciate. Tagore generation also, they aspired for that book. But I will still say probably they are not that badly placed. These examples I give when I talk on history, say my father's generation, which went to a school in Bihar, 1920s. What history book they read? They read the history book by Ramesh Chandra Dutt, whom I mentioned, whom all of you know. But the first initial passage of that book, Mother and Motherland says the poet are greater than heaven. This is Janani Janma Bhumisha, Swargadapi Gariyasi. So that was taught even in British time. Height of British Empire, 1920s. After post First World War, post Versailles world, British did not mind if Indians read this. So again, he had called for newer, bolder textbooks. Unfortunately, this remains a big, big problem for us. So, next, Tagore wrote profusely on Shivaji, on Maratha history, the Sikh gurus, a lots and lots of it he wrote. Even specific instances, assassination of Swami Sraddhanand, 1926 in Delhi which Gandhi had almost rationalized, if not justified. He strongly criticized that, condemned that. And you'll be uh, surprised to know when Pandit Nehru wrote a very moving tribute to Sardhanan. Very surprising, very moving tribute. Pandit Nehru did this, for, sorry, in his, uh, uh, autobiography. But Tagore wrote profusely. When Madan Mohan Malabiya was, had set up the Hindu University, he praised that. He said, good. Malabiji has done a good thing. Because at one stroke, he has demolished the myth that Hindus can't do big things. Hindus are happy with tolls and partialas. So that is a Hindu standard. No, he said, it's a very good thing. So like that, Tagore had taken up specific issues, no escapist attitude. And he plainly told a number of times that Muslims, Christians, they are meant to convert people. And he is never short of words in praising. Ramayana, fantastic, I think best piece essay that I've written. I Sorry, I don't read Marathi or uh, much of other literature. Fabulous piece on Ramayana. Fabulous piece on Hindu temples. Whole huge article on Hindu temples. What does temples signify? Yet as I say, he's a Brahmo. He was not a sort of ritual observing Brahmin or Kshatriya. is not that. So with these words, I will uh, bring an end to this rambling uh, discussion on these three characters for time.
hopefully i get uh when i write get an option right i will expand some of these points thank you so much everyone for listening to me very patiently thank you thank you thank you sir uh one uh, very important question that has popped up i think uh, we should take it i would read the question verbatim so that the panelists yeah. can understand and uh, yeah. one question uh, doctor regarding your discussion that came up is i think this is a concerned parent who is asking this i'm just assuming that please suggest how to educate our children about correct history since most of their school books are of the left leaning discourse and uh, how can we correct that situation which i personally can relate to because i am in education so ncrts are not the correct source of education for no no yeah yeah thank you you see that one thing what is uh, left in india <clears throat> you see most of the time as i told you i have no problem using making use of books written by british marxist historians i have no problem i have used them i admire them i recommend them i seldom found a problem it doesn't mean that i agree 100% to what what hobsbawm wrote or christopher hill wrote because they are really not, they are hard working scholars they read books and write our scholars so called scholars are half educated they are not well conversant to the literature they should read most of them don't consult the primary sources and they use certain high fly languages paradigm deconstruction narrative kind of things so they have no idea no desire to look at the primary sources which are in our case students of modern india means going to archives that they don't do and left in left history in india left is actually islamic agenda let's be very frank about this even the critics on the other side call them right or whatever they would not utter that word you know i tell them what is this basically islamic agenda the process was started by emen roy glorification of islamic rule in india and it actually started sitaram ji has pointed out the mopla rebellions gandhi after such a horrific genocide thousands of hindus killed converted women abducted raped it was a fashion that you should not talk about muslim atrocities so that was the political level political level anti hindu violence by muslims okay keep quiet so gandhi post khilafat post mopla emen roy and the nehru the discord of india nehru this time is babar as a renaissance prince is a man of culture he is seeking a certificate of good behavior from iqbal even after iqbal had given the idea of pre pakistan 1930 lahore session 1930 before 1940 so please make sure what you are trying to criticize so lot of this so called leftist marxist critic is actually islamic agenda justifying islamic rule okay now as i said i have not read anything from maharashtrian literature or hindi literature for that matter but i think bhartandu harishand wrote something very interesting bits and parts of it vidyapati mithila had referred to 13th century the islamic invasion so probably the local literature still holds the key and as long as you don't get the textbooks from ncert or the university system ugc please go back to the original sources bhati vidhavan series rc majumdar for the books written by all the great people radha kamal mukherjee radha kamal mukherjee altek kar jaiswal stiff still very good and sometimes some of the foreign scholars they are really good some american scholars are very good on indian history not much of bias no everyone has some bias probably even you will say after some time i have some bias 
So that is a very difficult thing to do achieve. All historians have, have some bias. But then if 90% of staff, 80% staff is genuine, then we can ignore the rest. The point is that students, those who are studying history, they have to go through the textbook, write examination, pass the examination, and get a job. So beyond a point, what would they do? That's a problem. Social media is fine. Sitaramji's books, Ramsaru's books are much more popular than they were, say, 30 years back. Hariji keeps telling me about how uh, the demand for Sitaramji's books are growing so fast. Every month he has to denote editions. Aditya, Sitaramji's grandson, also brings out Bengali translations. I know that because he passes on those translation draft to me for checking whether it's correct or not. So growing demand. But the whole point is as long as they don't, whatever we discuss, whatever we all write, if it doesn't find a mention, even a paragraph in the official textbooks, then we are not progressing much. Yes, we are creating a reservoir of knowledge is fine, but it must be passed on to the students, UGC, NCRT. That is the ultimate test. And there, the Marxists, I call Marxist jihadis, still maintain the stranglehold. hold. We have failed even last eight years. We have not made any dent on that. This is very unfortunate, but this is a fact. We still hope some new, sometimes there's some things being done. Let's, let's remain optimistic about that. 